All right, so today we are going to talk about Lung7. We're going to talk about where it is, what it does, and why it does what it do. So first, let's talk about where it's located. So everyone, you can take your palm, look at your palm, now flip it upside down, and extend your fingers all out. You'll notice that there's a pocket that's created here, right, at the base of your thumb. That's called your anatomical snuff box. There's two borders to the anatomical snuff box. It's both extensor tendons, extensor pollicis longus, and extensor pollicis brevis. Don't be scared by those big words, right? We learned bigger words and scarier words in TCM. But the extensor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis, all it is is just an extensor of the pollicis, which is the thumb, Latin for the thumb. And then it, there's a long one and then there's a short one, longus and brevis. That's all it is. So extend all your fingers, extend your thumb, extensor pollicis longus and brevis pops out. The middle of that is called your anatomical snuff box. Right smack dab in the middle of that is an acupuncture point called LI5. So LI5 is located right in the center of the anatomical snuff box. So where's lung seven? In relation to LI5, lung 7 is 1.5 sun proximal to LI5. So lung 7 is 1.5 sun proximal to LI5. How do we find it? We first find LI5 and we slide our finger down proximally until it falls into a cleft. That cleft is between two tendons, the brachioradialis and the abductor pollicis longus. Again, big words, but abductor, pollicis, longus. It's an abductor of the pollicis and it's long. And then the brachioradialis is just part of our wrist extensors. It's the workhorse of the forearm. So 1.5 soon proximal to that. And when you palpate it on your patient, all you do is you slide your finger down and you should feel your fingers drop into this cleft here. And that cleft is a splitting of the tendons of abductor pollicis longus and of brachioradialis. So what else should we know about the anatomical snuff box? Inside the anatomical snuff box is LI5. When we needle LI5, we should be cautious of some things. The number one thing that we should be cautious of is the cephalic vein sitting inside the anatomical snuff box. The floor of the anatomical snuff box is the scaphoid bone. On top of that, we have the cephalic vein. Inside there, we also have the radial artery. And then we also have the radial nerve that goes pretty superficially here. You can actually do a test if there's some sort of radial nerve palsy or pathology. You can do what's known as a Tennell's test. A Tennell's test is just when you tap a nerve that runs superficial to the skin. You can tap the radial nerve over here if you feel a shooting pain down into the top of the uh, top of the hand. Then there's a positive Tennell sign for the radial nerve. So then you would go proximal to see if there's any impingements all the way to the spinal nerve roots. All right, so that's where it is. Now let's talk about what it does and why. So what is lung seven? Lung seven is categorically, it's a law connecting point. We know that law connecting points like to go to a certain area and influence a certain area. So lung seven goes down and it actually influences the thenar eminence. We have a thenar eminence and we have a hypothenar eminence. So if you make a claw like this, you'll see there's a big bulge here and a smaller bulge here. The smaller bulge is called the hypothenar eminence. This one is called your thenar eminence, the base of the thumb. And that's where lung seven is going to disperse. So if you have heat signs like pain there, swelling there, you can use lung seven to treat pain in the thumb. You can also use lung seven in its function as a command point. So what is it a command point of? It's a command point of the head and the back of the neck or the head and the nape of the neck. And it's interesting, why is lung seven a command point of the head and the nape of the neck? When we know that lung doesn't go very far, right? Lung goes up to here, right? Doesn't go, even go past the neck, but large intestine does. And lung seven is a law connecting point, meaning it connects the interior and exterior related channel, lung and large intestine. And we know that large intestine goes up past the neck, past the mouth, past the nose, right? Into the face, into the head. So that way, lung seven is a command point for things like facial pain, headaches, 
headaches in the back of the head, any sort of heat signs that go up. Lung 7 also releases the exterior and expels wind. And so let's talk about what does release the exterior mean? We have to know first, what is even the exterior, right? The exterior is our skin, yes. Specifically, it's this area between the skin and the muscles. It's this area called the toe lee. The toe lee is this area between the skin and the muscles, and you have a lot of flow through there. Primarily, you have something known as Wei Qi that flows through there. And what does Wei Qi do? Wei Qi is our body's defense qi. It defends us. It also has a function of warming us. So when we have this exterior pathogenic factor like wind that invades into our body, where does it go first? It goes into the exterior. So it obstructs the Wei Qi as it's flowing through the area between the skin and the muscles, the to Li. If it becomes obstructed, if it becomes impaired, what's gonna happen? The function of warming us is gonna be impaired. So that's why we get some chills when we have a cold. That's why we get a runny nose. In addition, when that wind goes into the exterior, what governs this area? The lung governs this area. So the lung's function of descending and dispersing is also gonna be impaired. And so that's why you may get edema signs. You may get phlegm. You may get a runny nose. You may have a cough because we're not descending anymore. We're coughing things up now. And that, when you think back to six stages, that makes the chills, the fever, the runny nose, that makes that make so much more sense. So lung seven is a primary point, a very important point in releasing the exterior and expelling wind. We wanna expel that wind out of the exterior, right? It's still right now in that beginning stage when if we let it go interior into our body, it's gonna get worse. It's gonna turn into more heat signs. This is when you're saying, I feel like I'm coming down with something. I don't feel so good. Neck feels stiff. I have the sniffles, I'm coughing. I feel like I'm coming down with something. Right now, the best time to expel wind and release the exterior through lung seven. Besides just expelling wind, it can also pacify wind. When wind enters the body and you have something known as wind B syndrome, like wind painful obstruction, that wind, that exterior pathogenic factor, is settling somewhere. It can settle in the joints, it can settle in your muscles, and you'll have this very specific type of pain known as roving pain, where the pain moves from joint to joint, where the pain is in this muscle, and now it's in this muscle, and now it's in this muscle. It goes from place to place, and that's what makes it wind, wind B. So we can pacify this wind, we can expel this wind through lung seven. Lung seven can also regulate the water passages and it has a strong effect on phlegm because what is the function of lung? Lung descends and disperses. What does it descend and disperse? Well, yes, it governs chi, right? It commands respiration, but it does descend and disperse bodily fluids, right? It sends fluids to the spleen, to the arms, to the leg. But if there is an impairment in this function, that's why your patient can get edema, right? Because there's no descending and dispersing. They may get pulmonary edema. They may have edema in the arms. They may have edema in the legs, more so in the arms than in the legs, and more so in the chest cavity than in the legs as well. This may remind you of something called congestive heart failure. So lung seven is strongly recommended in releasing the exterior, expelling wind, and also getting the lung back to doing what it's supposed to do. It restores the function of the lung of descending and dispersing. So that's how it would treat edema. That's how it also transforms phlegm. So lung seven is strongly recommended in releasing the exterior, expelling wind, and also getting the lung to do what it's supposed to do again, which is to descend and disperse, right? Bodily fluids. And that brings us to how it affects phlegm. Because if we allow bodily fluids to accumulate, that's how damp can accumulate. That's how phlegm can accumulate. And that's why lung seven also has a function for pacifying phlegm. And then lastly, but not leastly, lung seven has a function for regulating the conception vessel, regulating the ren mai, because it's an opening point. It's a master point of the ren mai. And the conception vessel, aka the ren mai, has effects on the uterus, the genital system, the urinary system. So lung seven as that opening point can affect all those things, uterine issues, genital urinary issues, the whole gamut. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope this video helped you understand exactly what Lung7 does, where it is, and why it does what it does. Hopefully this video helped you understand the lung, 
the Wei Qi, the To Li, how all that relates together and how Lung Seven sort of wraps it all up. All right, I had a lot of fun making this video. If you like this video and you feel like it'll help someone else understand Lung 7 and also just all the functions of the lung as well, just send it over to them. You can click the share button below, send it in a text message, share it on your Facebook feed, share it with your fellow students, just share it to anybody you think would find it helpful. And of course, make sure if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos coming up. Hit the like button as well. And of course, drop a comment, say hello, or request any other videos. I'm making a ton of videos now. Whatever you request, I'm going to make a video on it. So until next time, God bless and happy studying.